Greetings, everybody. Ed here with part four of a four-part four series on how to increase your health span and longevity with Nutrition Made Simple. And today I want to talk about stop wasting your time exercising. What? Really? I don't mean that totally literally, but there's some real concerns I have with people in the gym that I've witnessed for 52 years. And what's happened is, one, we know that any movement is healthy and benefits our body because we can do blood testing of people who have sat for two to three days and it's actually turning toward the negative just by being still. And the old saying that uh, sitting is a new smoking is very valid because it is dangerous to be sitting. We will rust out far before we will wear out. And exercise of any type, even walk the mailbox, may be helpful. But let's be honest with each other. Most people exercise partially for health, but the majority want to look and feel better. They want their clothes to fit like they used to. They want to be like their old self in their skin. And that's simply not happening in all of the 52 years of me watching individuals in the gym. Now, when we look at the medical studies, what does exercise actually uh, do as far as longevity? We know that there's two factors that are very strongly correlated with longevity that have to do with exercise. It's VO2 max. What is that? That's the maximum level of oxygen consumption. If you are getting winded walking up steps, you probably have a low VO2 max. If you can run on a treadmill at the higher speeds and you recover quickly when you step off, you have a very high VO2 max. And the second is grip strength. Grip strength is strongly correlated with longevity. So those two things will only be part of your life if you work out. And I'm going to give you the five tips that I truly believe is the game changer for results in the gym. Well, number one is train for strength. Majority of people in the gym don't do that. And many times women don't because they think it's going to make them bulky. Let me tell you again, after 52 years of watching, hearing, listening, people talking to me every single day, six days a week about their health and their physique, unless you're on steroids or you are eating tons of excess carbohydrates, you're not going to gain bulk. And you certainly won't gain muscular bulk by lifting heavier weights because when we do weights without building strength, you're not building that correlation between longevity and health. You might build tone. You might feel good. You might like doing it. But it is minimal of what it will do for the long run of your life. And second, intensity counts. When I say intensity, it is the you know effort that you put into your workout. And I'm not by any means putting anybody down for just casually walking on a treadmill because, again, every little bit can be helpful to your health. But if you want to look different, that intensity has to go up to a point of almost damaging the body so that it recovers so that it, then it becomes stronger. Uh, there's a word called hormesis, which I really love. And I talk about this on one of my podcasts. Anything that can be almost toxic or dangerous or even kill us in excess, if we back that off in smaller amounts, it makes us much stronger. I did a podcast on this on The Holistic Navigator under how to be your own superhero. If you want to listen to how everything from cryogenics to fasting to many other things creates this hormesis and then makes us a better person, listen to The Holistic Navigator on how to be your own superhero. Third, regularity is the key. Regularity means not going to the bathroom. It means that you have to be in the gym on a regular basis. I've already told this so many times. Two times a week, you're going to barely, barely maintain, and you're probably going to slip backwards. Three times a week in the gym, you're going to maintain pretty darn well. So there's nothing wrong with three times a week if you're in pretty good shape because you can maintain for weeks and sometimes months. Four times a week is where you start making those gains. Five times a week is where you get the maximum out of your workout. Six times a week often is overtraining. I really feel that we have to have about two days off per week. Now, a lot of, and I'm not going to talk about this because we did it in the other three-part series of this, this whole series, is enough protein. Got to eat enough protein. If not, you're going to limit yourself so crazy that you will be frustrated. Number four, 
70% of your workout needs to be building strength. Does it have to be weight training? No, you could do other things that build strength, but it's easier with weights. And if you don't know how to work out with weights, get a good personal trainer. Again, the word is good. Someone who has experience that won't cause you injuries. And then 30% of your workout is aerobically based. When I look at people in the gym, locker room, as especially men, as men age, if they're only doing aerobics, everything gets flabby. Like a saying a long time ago, the hard parts get soft and the soft parts get hard. That's aging. We can slow that down if we lift weights and we do it correctly. And the thing is, when you lift weights, you need to be lifting about 10 to 11 reps maximum. And if you can do more than 10 or 11 reps, it's time to go up on the weight. This 20 rep stuff's not cutting it for anybody, man or woman. And lastly, this is something I had to learn the hard way. And once I did then it has been a game changer. Never stretch before your workouts. That is the recipe for injuries. Why? Because when you work out, you want something called a tightness, a tight junction, a really compact ability to lift weights so that your body and your tendons, ligaments, and your structure can hold everything in place. When you stretch, it all gets loosey-goosey. And then you have the ability to move things in areas where there's injuries involved. Warm up before you work out. I go to the sauna, may do the treadmill, may just walk around somewhere at a fast pace. But warming up is very important. Stretching is after your workout. So there's your five tips for hopefully turning the corner, getting back in the gym if you're not. And if you are, maybe making some of these points work for you because it's all about learning to empower yourself and taking control of your health because nobody else is going to do it. Thank you.